welcome you all to another Red Hat Open Demo session. My name is Mike Savage, Solutions Architect with our partner technical development team. Today we're going to be talking about migrating .NET Core applications to Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. My, in my role, I uh, work with our Apex partners, and today we have uh, one of my Apex partners, Stone Door Group, and CJ is going to help us uh, understand more about how we can migrate .NET Core apps to Red Hat OpenShift. Um, if you could uh, kick it to the next slide, CJ. Um, here's a little intro about myself and CJ. Um, you know, a big part, Sundor is a big partner of ours. Uh, we're really happy to help them, or have them help us. Um, and if you kick it to one more slide, CJ. Those of you in attendance, go ahead and uh, copy down that link. December underscore open demo underscore raffle. I will provide it again at the end, but it allows you to win a gift certificate. Um, and if we go over time um, and you uh, have more questions and want to ask us more, and you, you have the um, opening in your calendar, good, please feel free to stick around. We want to answer everyone's questions and I uh, hope you enjoy the demo. So with that, I want to hand it over to CJ and let him uh, take it away. Thank you, CJ. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> okay. Uh, my name is uh, CJ Meilinger. I'm an OpenShift consultant with Stone Door Group. I do a few other things on the side, but I've been working with OpenShift uh, primarily uh, the last three years, uh, starting with OpenShift 3.1, and my current engagement uh, is working with OpenShift 4.2 and the uh, OpenShift um, uh, OpenShift dedicated um, environment. So. Over that time, my emphasis has been primarily platform, but given the nature of DevOps, uh, you know, we wear many hats and I've taken my automation skills that I've built up over the last couple of decades and applied them to CI CD pipelines, picked up a thing or two on how to containerize applications, and I've helped several clients, uh, you know, containerize their apps, get them into a CI CD pipeline and deploy them and run them on an open shift. So uh, today we're going to look at .NET applications, and um, we'll have a little demo showing you how, how to get them running up in OpenShift. All right, so the purpose of this demo is to um, uh, demonstrate the, uh, how OpenShift is replacing standalone servers and VMs. A lot of things are going to the container model. Um, there are lots of platforms out there that can handle it. Mention any competitors' names, but uh, the upstream for OpenShift to Kubernetes, that's a very popular one. Um, and we're going to highlight some of the things that OpenShift has to offer to make it the best of breed here uh, in, in these uh, containerized um, uh, clusters. Okay, so the following are three reasons why customers are choosing to make take out. Well, just containerization alone provides uh, tons of advantages. It is a lighter footprint than a virtual machine. All you have is your application code and, and dependencies. You don't have to worry about uh, emulating or virtualizing hardware, uh, getting the specific drivers necessary for, hard, for the emulated or virtualized hardware. Um, it's an isolated process, so security is kind of built into the containerized model. Of course, you can open that up and make it less secure or more secure, depending on what your organization's needs are. But uh, a lot of folks are looking at containerization, even outside you know, the, the OpenShift world. So that's that's one of the big uh, reasons people are looking at this stuff. Now, the clustered platform is a nice environment to deploy your container image. So, right, so let's say you've containerized your application. That's great. You can run it in Docker, right? You can say Docker run, and you've got one instance of your application running on one server. And that's not a huge improvement over the standalone server or standalone VM model. 
Um, it does provide the security benefits of contain containerization, but um, if you deploy it into a, a clustered platform like Red Hat OpenShift, then you can leverage a lot of the capabilities and services provided by that platform, namely logging and metrics are built in. Um, you can scale pretty easily. You can um, have, you know, red, red, blue, um, I'm sorry, blue, green deployments, um, uh, all sorts of things that are provided by the, the cluster platform itself. And then the other thing too is the time to market for software updates, new features that, you know, sometimes are chargeable updates. Uh, those are important to get into production as quickly as possible. So a lot of folks are adopting the continuous uh, integration, continuous delivery model, CICD, and OpenShift is just about a turnkey solution for a lot of CI/CD pipelines. And so it's got support for uh, Jenkins and GitLab and uh, Tekton and a bunch of others. And so we'll be looking at that in our demo today as well. Okay, demo assumptions. Uh, so customer is running a .NET application on a standalone server or, or VM. Uh, with that assumption, we're going to show you a lot of OpenShift. If you're already running on OpenShift, a lot of the stuff will seem familiar to you, um, and you will have undoubtedly seen it before, but um, the expectation here is uh, you're not running on OpenShift just yet. Uh, and then, but also the assumption is that you're running into some sort of challenges with your current uh, model of, of application deployment or and uh, with those you know it's, it's gonna be the routine things uh, multiple deployment environments is always a big one um, and containers are are pretty portable um, there are subtle differences um, when you get into uh, you know different operating system stuff like so there is a container platform for Windows but you know on OpenShift it's it's Linux only so um, and of course, scaling and uh, slow to update, so we can really implement that CI/CD pipeline and get as as fast uh, time to market as possible. Okay, so our goals: we are going to uh, containerize an application, deploy it into OpenShift, look at some of the uh, OpenShift provided services, and um, trigger new builds and deployments from a code update. Um, and I've made a couple of tweaks to that part of the demo right before we started. And um, so you got to cross your fingers. If we if, uh, run into an, an issue, we'll just uh, add troubleshooting, uh, <laughs> troubleshooting app deployment to our demo goals here. All right, so this takes us into the demo itself. So I'll go ahead and take out of this and going to show you a few tabs here. Um, okay, go ahead and kill that flashing item there. All bits for this. Okay. All right, so I've got a few tabs open uh, that we'll be looking at throughout the demo. The first one is my OpenShift web console. And the OpenShift web console is uh, divided up into uh, several sections here. You got your home section where you can see projects. We haven't created any yet. Uh, catalog. So if I click on that, I can. Um, oh, I have to. Let's do, go ahead and create a uh, project here. Uh, yeah. Eight. Um, there we go. So now I have a project. If I go to the catalog you'll see sorts of options here. Um, so these are templates that are provided by OpenShift. And if I wanted to migrate a .NET application into OpenShift, I can use one of these templates. Um, and what you do is you just go ahead and say create application. And you put the repository for your code in here. And um, it will use that template. We'll take a look at the template a little bit later. Um, another way to create an application is to use the command line. And that's what we're going to use to start here pretty soon. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is make sure I am uh, logged in. So 
So I am logged into my cluster. And this OC command is what we're using as our uh, open, OpenShift command line. So, uh, and I had a few temp, uh, a few typos in rehearsal. So um, I've got some of this stuff like typed up ahead of time and it uh, saves, saves some drama. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, create a, another project here. And so this command OC new project creates the project and the underlying Kubernetes namespace. Um, and then it allows you to um, go ahead and deploy applications and stuff into that project. So if I come back to my projects page here, you'll see that they're, they both show up now. Here's the one I created using the web browser. Uh, here's the one I created with the command line. The next thing um, we're gonna look at is, on this next tab, <clears throat> here's the code that I'm using. Now this is just cloned from the um, example code that comes with the OpenShift template. Uh, I cloned it into GitLab because for the CI/CD portion, we're using a GitLab runner, and I'll talk more about that later. Um, another uh, item we should know, and uh, we have with, at Stonedar Group an uh, OpenShift container platform page. And on this page, there are lots of neat things. You can download a white paper. Uh, request a conversation. Who knows, you might end up talking to me. Uh, there's a data sheet, and then there's a free trial of OpenShift. So if you don't have access to resources to deploy OpenShift, uh, we can help you out with that. So keep in mind, just standardgroup.com slash OpenShift hyphen container hyphen platform. Uh, another thing is the docs page here. So docs.openshift.com, a very, very helpful resource. Uh, it's searchable if you've got multiple versions. So uh, going back to, to 3.1, where I started, uh, and 4.2 is the most current. The, cat, the Red Hat catalog for container images includes uh, support for .NET Core. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, skip ahead here to this last tab. Uh, one of the things you should know when you're trying to bring your .NET app into OpenShift, I wanna highlight that the title of the demo is, you know, is to migrate a .NET Core app. So if you're running with the standard sort of .NET framework, uh, you will have to uh, port it over to Core and this is a handy tool that you can use to see how uh, how core ready your .NET application is. We're going to spend a lot of time on on how it works or anything. We're going to start with the assumption it's .NET Core. Why? Uh, this is a tool that uh, people have used in the field to to help them get their apps ready. <clears throat> That's just docs Microsoft com, et cetera. You can see the URL there. Um, so that being said come over here uh, in the container image catalog, we can see that the, um, oh, thanks Mike. Uh, so yeah, so the link for the uh, uh, the Stonedor group page is in the, ch the Blue Jeans chat if you wanna grab that. Um, and, I, and I'll, at some point we'll take, a, we'll pause for questions and I'll put these other links in the chat as well, how about that? Uh, so in this catalog, you've got, all sorts of container images that are ready to go. The two I want to highlight are this uh, .NET, and this is version 2.1, but there's a 2.2 in there. There's also a 3.0 3 and so on. Um, this is your kind of full container image for supporting .NET. So it's going to have your build tools and all kinds of good stuff in there uh, to you know, uh, compile and build your application. There's also a separate runtime only, which is a little lighter weight. So if you had a process by which you uh, compiled and built your application outside of OpenShift and just needed a container image to inject it into so that it can run in OpenShift, you can just go straight to this runtime. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna leverage the, uh, the full power of OpenShift and use this build image. We're gonna build it actually in OpenShift. Uh, when you look at your images, you can see uh, that there are a bunch of them here. So here's the tags and a bunch, bunch of stuff here, right? So these are all different versions of the images. You can check the health index to see how healthy it is. Obviously, when security vulnerabilities are, are announced, 
uh, we go ahead and update these things as fast as possible and make sure you guys have uh, you know a rated images uh, available uh, as quick as you can and then when we get to the CICD portion we're going to use this OpenShift GitLab runner um, there are provided options for CICD in OpenShift so let me come back over here to the catalog see what we've got should have a Jenkins template available uh, let's see a lot of JBoss. There's Jenkins. All right, so here's Jenkins that comes with it. There's another one called uh, Tekton, I think. Let's see if that's available. Not seeing it. Um, but there's also the Red Hat Community of Practice. Good. And there are other, you know, tools for spinning up CI/CD pipelines in this uh, in this GitHub repo. So you can go ahead and search for that stuff. Uh, the reason we're doing GitLab today is twofold. Uh, one, if you are familiar with OpenShift you, or you know any sort of Linux-based CI/CD, you've probably run into Jenkins, um, and uh, this will give you an opportunity to learn something. New, if you haven't used the GitLab runner, because uh, I think it's becoming more mo more popular, but it's uh, uh, probably not as well known as, as Jenkins to the OpenShift community. Uh, the other is uh, this particular runner is one that um, I and some colleagues built for one of our clients, and we've been working with this day to day and it's actually been a while since I've touched Jenkins. So the second reason is that uh, for practical reasons, if something we run into a hiccup, um, I'm pretty intimately familiar with this uh, this setup and troubleshooting and getting back on track would be a lot faster. So for both those reasons we're using the GitLab runner. And this um, the uh, the client was very gracious, uh, fully supporting open source communities and, and whatnot, and they have given us permission to post this uh, to the, the Red Hat community of, pra of practice, I just haven't submitted it yet, so it's still under my name here. But this will be undoubtedly um, maintained by the Red Hat OpenShift consulting community. All right, so those are the, the tabs that we have up and running. Uh, come back over here and go ahead and deploy an app. So right now in this um, .NET project, we have nothing going on here. And I'm gonna bounce back and forth so you can see what things look like in the um, in the web console and also the command line. And so from the command line, you'd type something like OC, get, and then a resource type. And if you say all, it's not actually gonna show all resources, but it's gonna show all the common ones. And you'll see there's nothing there, or hopefully it's nothing. There we go, no resources found, but there are actually resources. Uh, let's just start with when you create a project you get a, a few default service accounts so a builder service account um, a default and a deployer uh, those service accounts will have secrets for interacting with the um, uh, various components of, of OpenShift all right so there are a few things there but as you get all shows nothing right now okay so instead of using the web browser and a template, I'm gonna use this OC new app command. Now this is something that Kubernetes doesn't have. This is a Red Hat um, add-on. And it's a very, very cool feature for deploying apps um, first time. Now this should work uh, flawlessly because I tested this and <laughs> everything was great. But even when it failed, that's okay because what this uh, new app command is gonna do is it's gonna start building OpenShift resources for you. And if those resources are not quite configured properly to deploy your app, um, you, you, then you have something to tweak. You're not starting with a blank page and trying to type up a bunch of JSON or YAML to get your OpenShift resources going. So for that reason, I, I like this a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So OC new app, <clears throat> um, I'm gonna specify this .NET image uh, 2.1 because 2 this is a 2.1 application. Uh, I'm going to give it a name. 
and then uh, I'm going to give it a context uh, directory. So the reason for that is the actual code is in, in this app directory here. Um, now, even though I've specified this, you know, let's let's go ahead and break it. Um, do something here. OC uh, do project jam break. Okay. So that you know it's a live demo and kind of go ahead and make it up to you, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that image um, name off. So .NET colon 2.1, that is the name of a container image used to build the source code in this URL here, right? So GitLab, CMyland, uh, .NET EX. So if I say OC new app, now it's just looking at that repository, right? It's got a context there to see where the uh, application code is, and I give it a name.NET, but is there anything that really says that this is a .NET app? Um, well, there's some smarts in uh, OpenShift um, to go ahead and look at the, the, uh, the repository itself and determine what the uh, application code is. So if it's .NET, it'll figure that out. If it's a Node.js, it'll figure that out. If it's Java, it'll figure that out. Um, so while this is running, go ahead and uh, watch the build process here. Now this will break because again, it's going to have a mismatch. Let's see what we got here. The error. It was going to break, but I didn't expect it to break that fast. Okay. Well, what I expected to see, just so you know, is that it was going to figure out that it was a .NET app, but um, it was going to be the wrong version. So that's why you have to specify it. Now, how did it figure that out? If you look at the docs, um, if I get the right search term here, uh, language detection, maybe? I think it's under something like that. Yeah, language detection, here we go. <clears throat> so what it's going to do is look inside your repo for these various files. And that tells it that it's going to you know, be one of these languages. So these are the old ones that are detected by default. So you can just start, if you're uh, spinning up an app, just go ahead and point it to the repo and let OpenShift figure it out as long as it's got one of these uh, files in there. Uh, otherwise, you can force it you know, by using a specific build container and so on. So that didn't work as well as I thought it would. So let's go ahead and go back to uh, the project. Let's see what I called it. So I'm back in the .NET project here. And I'm going to give it the full full name. So this this will work. All right, so here's the cool stuff, right? Creating resources. It created an image stream. That is simply a pointer to a set of container images. Take a look at that in a little bit more detail. A build config tells OpenShift how to build the container image. The deployment config tells it how to deploy. And then the service is a resource that you can point to when you need these applications to either talk to the outside world or talk to each other. And the reason for that is in, um, in a clustered environment like this, we're going to have these pods that spin up. And go ahead and watch some, some build logs while I'm talking. Let's see. Uh, uh oh, that is not good. Get pods. Okay. Tell you what, 
let us cheat a little bit and go with the template. All right. So if we go to project.net, I'm going to call this one. Four. And there we go. Go ahead and create a rad. Okay, so we got a couple things going on there. Let's see. Um, anyway, so these these uh, resources were created, and we take a look at this. So now, if I do OC get all. You can see there's a, a build pod is actually building something. And this is the same code, so I'm not quite sure what's happening with this. So let's see. Uh, logs nice F on the build. And there you go. So it's going to be downloading your uh, S2I image. It's going to download your code do builds and compiles and all kinds of good stuff. So, let us take a look at these other things. Okay. So, here's the service. We'll just take them in order that they appear in this output. So the pod is, is a, what a pod is, that's a Kubernetes term uh, and also an OpenShift term to refer to um, a, a resource that points to either a, a, a running container or a collection of containers. You can have more than one container in a pod, but the pod is the, uh, the most granular unit of application processing that we can deal with here. So, We'll, and we can look at that once we get the uh, the running pod up and running. Uh, build pod is just doing its thing underneath. <clears throat> so the service, so the service uh, oh, oops. Yeah. Exactly. So we're going to look at the service. It's got a cluster IP address again in a in an environment like this, a clustered containerized uh, um, platform, the pods will be spinning up and spinning down all over the place. There's no way to know for sure what the IP address of a given uh, application pod is going to be. So there's mechanism within OpenShift to be able to manage um, that information, and we use the service for that. So the service address won't change, even though the um, pod ad addresses might, and this is just the link that allows us to see what it looks like. So if I want to get this output in YAML, it'll look something like this. So here's service, some metadata showing when it was created, the app is .NET, namespace, which is my project, cjm.net, a bunch of other stuff used for, for bookkeeping. Here's the um, IP of the service, the ports, so it's going to take stuff in from 8080 and, and um, send it to 8080. Uh, there's a, a selector here, so if anything is labeled as um, as .NET, as its application, that that's how we know it's associated with this service. Uh, and the deployment config uh, from which this uh, for which this app is is related is also called .NET here. All right. So um, you'll see it. There's there's no pods listed here. That's because it was still building. See if we've got new pods yet. <clears throat> okay. So here's the first one that errored out. Here's the actual running pod. Um, so now it's been up for 42 seconds. The build has been completed. If you want to look at your build output. You just look at the logs for that pod. So get, uh, I'm sorry, OC logs for the .NET build. You get the you'll get the full thing. 
And those build pods can be left around. Um, and that's configurable how long how long they can stay or how many. You might want to go back two or three builds to see what's happened there. Oops. Uh, and then the deploy pod, once the, the application pod has been, or the application container image has been built, the deploy pod is the one that actually deploys it. So that's another thing. And then this is the actual running application itself. Um, so now that we have that, we should be able to look at the service again and, and see that. Yep. All right. So the other, other way to get information about a resource is to describe it. All right, so here's your endpoints. So that's the actual pod, the address. But when you're using, you know, service-to-service -service communication, app, um, app component to app component, you always reference his address because this this puppy will change. In fact, we can make a change probably right now. Let's do it. Uh, let's see, delete pod. Uh, the minus W switch here is just a watch, so you can kind of see things as they are changing on, on your system here. So any sort of update to the status will do that. So here we go. Um, so the first one was WKLXC. This one was uh, container creating status, and it changed to running status. So it's running now. And let's see if we got a new IP address on that guy. We did. So again, that just kind of demonstrates that these pods can come and go, and you will um, always be able to reference it through the service address. Now, the next thing, next resource, uh, what was the next on our list? Uh, deployment config. Uh, again, that tells how it's uh, supposed to be deployed. And I'm going to brush through this really quickly because I'm keep looking at the, the time here, and I want to be able to squeeze in some of the the runner stuff. Um, image stream. If I look at the .NET image stream, oops. you'll see it's got a reference to an image. So if this ever changes, what it'll do is um, add another image reference to the same image stream. So the stream is, like I said, a collection of images. They will all be uh, this .NET for this namespace, um, but this hash will, will change if the code itself changes, right? If you do a code update, do a new build, um, you'll have a different um, uh, image uh, reference in here. Also, uh, you can have uh, tags as well, so you can see a reference to, say, .NET colon latest is a pretty common one. Stuff like that will be in your image stream. Um, deployment config, build config, and route. So the route is another handy thing. If you remember, I checked a box saying create route when I deployed this template. And uh, what it does is it creates a an external uh, or a link between uh, an external host name and the service itself. So we get route. Now I can say route.net and get that specific route. Or if I just leave it as you get route, I'll get all the routes. And that still works with the YAML output. So if you want to just dump all of them. Um, so here you got the host name and the target port. And uh, the namespace is the name. OK, yeah, so to service.net. So it's going to go to that, that service. Um, if we take this URL and put it in a browser, it will point to your app. Okay, uh, it's pretty straightforward, simple app. It's not, not super, not super fancy. Okay, so um, and actually, I came from lab or didn't come from GitLab. Let's um, take a look at the broken one um, because, again, since we're planning on using, well, I'll go ahead and open up the uh, 
the runner stuff here and then we'll troubleshoot it. Um, so basically this project allows you to deploy a runner which will link with your uh, application code repository and allow you to uh, send any sort of like build command commands into OpenShift. Um, so the architecture looks something like this. You've got a project that has a runner image in it. That's where you kind of build your image, uh, update it, things like that. And then you have a project for your application where you're actually running an instance of the runner. And a good architecture uh, design for this is to have a, a unique runner for each of your applications. Uh, you can have separate projects for building. Uh, and if you want to, you know, for feature branching, you can have, you know, service accounts to go spin these things up, create an ephemeral project, do some work, and then tear it down. So it's pretty, pretty comprehensive. Um, set it up, we're just going to go ahead and use these settings here. Again, trying to avoid typos. Uh, so those are my, my parameters. And then we can just kind of cut and paste this here. So, uh, let's see, projects. So we just have so we just have the one pro project now. While those two are terminating, let's see up here projects. Okay, so we just have the one. Go ahead and deploy our runner. So I'm going to create a, a project for the service account. And I'm going to create a service account. And all this stuff is up on this runner. So I'm going a little too fast. I'm going to paste that in there too. All right. Uh, and then we can get the token with an OC command. And I want to see what it looks like. Uh, this would be, let's say, looks like something like that. Um, and so our service account is set up. Then to uh, build the uh, GitLab runner container image, if we look over here, the container registry, this is the nothing up my sleeve thing here. We've got a an OpenShift template similar to the .NET template that allows us to deploy a build config for building the image and an image stream that allows us to uh, upload it into GitLab itself or whatever repository you want to want to put it in. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project for that. See the projects keep on. So here's the service accounts project, CJM GitLab runner image. Again, this is just for building the image. I'll deploy it as an instance, a running instance in a separate project. Um, and so we're using version 12.3. And so the first thing I'm going to do is create a secret. This allows me to build or I got um, this secret will allow me to post the container image into this repo, which is protected. So it's not, uh, you can't do an anonymous uh, foot like the old FTP days. I think those are pretty much long gone. Um, and so what we're doing is we've got a, a template. It's called OpenShift GitLab Runner BC is build config. Uh, this template is going to include a few other things. Uh, in addition, it's going to have an image stream, uh, secrets, or, or reference to the secret. Anyway, we just created the secret up here. Um, Runner version, we're going to pass that in. Git repo, user, git repo pass. This is not um, not a protected 
on, on the source code side, so those are not really necessary, but at any rate, we'll go ahead and do this. And in the image, we look at pods. Again, I'm jumping back and forth again. So here's a build pod, and you saw me type OC logs minus F to follow the logs. Um, so you can also just click on the pod itself. There's a bunch of things up here. So here's the YAML. So if I want to say OC get pod minus O YAML, this is what the output would look like. Um, the environment shows all the parameters put in there. And logs shows the uh, the build here, right? So this is building the image. It is using the um, universal base image. So this is a nice uh, uh, value add from, from Red Hat. You can um, use this and you not, don't really have to worry about subscriptions and whatnot. It's just a, a nice Red Hat maintained image that you can build on and um, it gets updated um, whenever there's a you know, security vulnerability or, or some any sort of other reason. So uh, when we uh, use this, we can also trigger rebuilds based on uh, the updates. Right, it's going to give you your environment, your working directory. Uh, you've got an entry point script, and then also the good stuff. It then um, you know, does a Docker build, and will push the image up to GitLab runner test. All right, and then if I come back over here, and again we looked at packages, there were none, so it should be. Push by now. If I hit brush, you'll see that it just up uploaded this new Im image. So we've got a container image up there. Now from that we can deploy it into another project. So we want to deploy an instance, and again, if you have multiple applications running, you're probably going to have a separate instance for each one. So we do one build in a project, but then we can deploy that same image uh, multiple times into multiple other projects. Uh, so, my runner project is going to be uh, cjm.net runner, and my build project be cjm.net build. Go ahead and look at that. So, go ahead and create the project. Build project. Um, and this gives the service account I created access to that project. So, we're going to Go ahead and look at this thing here. So OC policy, add role to user. So the role is going to be edit, and it's going to edit to the user, system service account, et cetera, et cetera, GitLab runner service account guy. And it's going to apply that to the build project. So that gives that service account the ability to work within that project to make stuff happen. And again, apologies. The 2 p.m. I thought was just a stand-up. It was actually iteration planning. So it, it, my uh, awesome PM is uh, going to reschedule that. So you've got me for the, the long haul, as long as you're willing to stay. Okay. Where are we? Um, okay. So we've applied this service count role to the project. I'm going to create the runner project here. And so I created .NET Runner. And now I'm going to create some more secrets. Uh, so these guys can, can pull the uh, container image. OK. Now here's a little quirk, you know, extra, extra bonus learning uh, in this demo. A little quirk with um, the GitLab registry. When you go to pull something from the Git code repo itself, you can just simply specify gitlab.com as, as the uh, target for your secret. And that's what we did in um, this upper section here. So for the build, we just created one secret, gitlab image push, right, for pushing it. But if you are going to be pulling a container image, if you if you authenticate merely to GitLab.com, that's not going to work. 
if you authenticate to registry.getlive.com, that's not going to work either. You have to authenticate to both. It's like I said, it's kind of a little quirk. So nice little takeaway if you end up working with GitLab. Uh, so we create two secrets and link both of those to um, to our default service account. So OC secrets link. That's what that default is. And again, those are our, our three. So the default service account is the one that's going to be pulling this stuff. All right. So we have built, we've created secrets. Um, okay. Uh, here's another secret we can create that allows us to pull images from the integrated registry within OpenShift. So the Docker server here is Imagey, like registry, OpenShift, image, registry, service, blah, blah. So that's the service uh, address or the internal address of the, um, of the container registry in OpenShift. Although we won't be using that in this particular example. So then you can clone this uh, repo to get the deployment config template, which is already running here, or already downloaded, I should say. And then you can process that template and send it into, except we're gonna do something, let's see, yeah, it's fine. So now, come back up here, projects, uh, the .NET runner, it's deploying, and then here's the runner itself. And when this is done, uh, this uh, deployment one should disappear. Now it's still there. If I come over to this uh, project, Runner. So here's the deploy. Uh, but since it's a, a one job thing, it's not a running, you know, always on kind of service like a web server or anything like that. It just does a job and then it shuts down. So it says completed. So it's still there technically, but it doesn't show up here because it's only going to show the running pods, right? Um, if I say completed, you can see, there it is. Okay. Uh, if we want to verify that this actually registered properly, we can go to the code repo, which is here, and uh, look at the ICD settings, runners. And I disabled the shared runner. So GitLab will provide runners that you can just run as you're sharing them with everybody else in the world. Uh, runner is active for this project. So OpenShift GitLab runner, um, it's, it's running. It's got the two labels, test one and test two, that you saw in our command line here. Those are the tags. Um, if you want to see the runner itself, we can over here and terminal, we can uh, look around in here. Again, this is a running container image. Uh, so here's a bunch of environment stuff. Um, where am I? Okay. So this entry point script, That's, it registers the GitLab runner, passing in all those parameters that we shoved in there, right? Runner options, image pull secrets, uh, your OC token, that'll be for your service account, and so on. If I look at the logs for this thing, it'll show that uh, you know the runner registered successfully, and so on. 
Um, and of course, you can see it on the GitLab side as well. So now we should be able to like pass commands into this. Um, and let's see how this goes. Um, make a quick modification here. So let's go back to bgm.net project and look at um, our look at a build. Uh, all right, so these are two uh, build configs. And what I'm going to do is you can see the latest here is one. And I'm going to write a quick pipeline that will trigger a new build of that thing. And that new build will go out and, and grab the source code. Um, since that is not a repository, I have uh, write access to, I won't be able to actually change the code, but I can show you it'll trigger a build. So if you did uh, make an update, um, it, it would go ahead and kick things off. So you have to use your imagination a little bit. We're gonna go into this application space here. Um, see. So I'm gonna, the way this, any, any code change here will trigger this pipeline. And the pipeline looks something like this. Um, you've got, you find an image that you wanna use for your, your stage. Um, you can, the, the tags section here tells it which runner to use. So if you had multiple runners that had different purposes, you can do this. Um, and then you can use something like script. And this script will have, you know, OC login uh, to the server. And you can do stuff like new project is this, uh, new app, do a deployment, um, tear down the project, perform tests. This test is is a, is, and you can uh, link these jobs to stages just like any other sort of pipeline management uh, automation tool uh, that's out there. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna update this repo, but instead of a new app pointing this repo, I'm just gonna do a start build in the other project, which will pull from the um, example repo provided by um, by him or whoever put that up there. So it's a red hat image. So that's what's going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and make those updates. Um, so login is good. So this is another little uh, cheat in that so the, the service account I created, just for the record, it does not have the full authority to create projects. Uh, so I started using my own here uh, and then changed the, like I said, I was making some tweaks to this right before the, uh, the demo started. So we're gonna go here, uh, instead of the .NET, we're gonna do a start build on, on .NET here, start instead of .NET X. Um, and what does OCP tools, images is just another UBI image, right? Universal base image from Red Hat. And it has the OC client on it. So I can do OC login, OC project, and have all the interactions I want with OpenShift. Go ahead and trigger this thing. So again, any sort of um, updates would, uh, would trigger this. Hey, CJ, I know we're coming up on time. What I'm going to do is just yeah. let you keep rolling. And if anybody needs to drop, go ahead. But CJ is going to keep rolling just for a little while longer and uh, finish out this demo. So I'll let you get back after, yep. after it. I put the uh, link to the raffle in the chat. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. And for those of you deciding whether you want to stick around or not, we've probably got another five minutes uh, to get to where we've actually triggered a build from a code update. Okay, so uh, this looks like it'll work. Um, right now, here's the repository. If I go to jobs, you can see this is from earlier today, an hour ago, when I was making some tweaks and got things fixed. Um, 
So when I push this update, even though this is an update to the pipeline and not the code, it doesn't care. Any update to this repository will, will trigger it. Uh, so go ahead and um, add this guy. And hit push. So on our jobs page, we should get a new job triggered. There we go, running. And what we'll see is, three pods, not pods, um, projects, dot net build. So this is uh, in a, like an ephemeral pod, so it's, oops, there you go, it's gone. <laughs> Luckily we're recording. So what it did is it, um, it grabbed this, uh, let's see what we do here. Here it is. So here is the image that it's grabbing. It spun up this in this. Uh, so DDM.net build was the project we were just looking at. It spun up a pod for the purposes of processing this pipeline. And it, you saw it delete it as soon as it's done. It downloads your uh, Git code. And um, yeah, so from from there. It's checking this thing out as master. Uh, I did an echo here, so you can see it's passing my service count token into the environment. Uh, but I'm actually using my token here to log in. So it's logged in as me, the service account. It's a little, little uh, switcheroo there. Um, so it changed to the project.net, uh, and then it does a build. So again, now this is pointing to the uh, the Git. Um, GitHub repo instead of the GitLab repo, but we can go over there and see what that looks like. Um, projects, m.net, pods. So this middle number is the build ID. So .net one, that's running right now, and it's going to stay running until this build gets completed. Let's go ahead and tail that down here. All right, project. Uh, logs. Okay, so that while that's running, we can kind of look at the logs at the bottom of the, the screen and we can watch the this thing uh, create this when the build is done it will um, trigger a deploy pod and when the deploy pod has spun up the new app it will you know, kill this one here and then you'll see .NET minus two showing that it's from the second build uh, and then of course a random string of characters so while it's running let's go ahead and open up the floor for questions um, if you have any questions you, i think it's star four to come off the uh, auto view if um, you just want to put it in the chat. I'm monitoring the chat so I can see the questions there as well. I've unmuted the mics. So if anyone has a question, please go ahead. So, well, you can see the, uh, the second pod is spinning up here and container creating over here on the right. Uh, as soon as that's running, it'll terminate this, the original one. That way you don't lose any, um, lose any uptime. Hey, hey quick Sorry. question, if you don't sure. mind. Uh, so the, the change you made there, you just kind of directly changed it in the, in the repo. Well, you could also do that if you did like a pull request or something like that on a branch. You can do branch builds and things out of this as well. I mean, you seem to, sh I, I, I know you didn't show that here, but you could do that if you wanted to, a branch build and put that somewhere else. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, sure. Yeah, and, and we've done that with the uh, the client I'm working with right now, and the uh, my colleague who is actually working on that part of the pipeline. I was working on the, uh, the platform side, getting the runner up and integrated with OpenShift. Um, that code is going to end up on the uh, Red Hat Community of Practice uh, website as, as well eventually. I don't think he has it public yet. It has to be scrubbed with the clients. But yeah, it's 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 pretty uh, pretty elaborate. You can um, you said do uh, branch builds, uh, total project management, like create the projects with your um, uh, you know your your branch tag or whatever. Do all the testing you need, um, tear it down, um, and then triggers based on on merge. Uh, so hopefully that answers the question. Well, the guy answered travel, uh, which uh I'm sorry I didn't I didn't if you're not asking a question, I'd be asked that you please go on mute. We've unmuted everyone to be able to ask questions. So if you're not asking a question, please mute your mics. Thank you. So just another question on the on the runner itself. That's just the Go application that you'd normally use with GitLab. There, that's that. Then you just package up and deploy into OpenShift and run it or run it that way. That's kind of how that that works. There's nothing like special yeah, about it's, that. Uh, it's just the container. Yeah, let me uh, let me show you. Um, so. Uh, runner. Okay. Yeah, so you just start with the UBI image, set some parameters. Uh, instrument. And set up, uh, what is it here? It's been a while since I looked at the actual Docker file because this was done a while ago. Um, yeah, so this hurdle command is a script that sets up the yum repo. And then, yeah, we just do yum install the GitHub runner itself. Okay, cool. Thanks. And there's an example OCP tools up here as well. It's very similar. This is not what I'm currently using for this example. Um, but again, starting with the UBI and um, OC, but we're also using some Helm templates in our current engagement, so we have both of those clients on there. But again, it's just a Docker file. You can kind of roll your own and make all sorts of magic happen. All right. Interesting. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And we. I think I did put that one in the chat, didn't I? Yeah, so the, the link is in the chat if you wanted to read it, read it further and feel free if you have any questions on that in particular, just email me since I did most of the work on that. Although uh, it's definitely a shoulders of giants type thing, right? So um, there was some code I got from a colleague that gave me a really good head start. <laughs> but uh, uh, then it took it to the next next level here, and then, like I said, once we get into the community practice, there'll be all sorts of enhancements to it, and it'll be pretty rock solid, I'm sure, in a short time. All right. Um, let's do the last. Oh, I got a couple more slides. Let's go back to the slide deck, Ken. Okay, so that's our demo. So here's our conclusion. Uh, the key takeaways for the demo are this, that if you do have .NET Framework apps, they do need to be 
ported uh, to .NET Core specifically. So if you're not running .NET Core um, right now, that's that's the first step. Uh, takeaway should be that uh, containerizing the apps is easy. Uh, you saw that um, it's basically OC new app can can get you there. So some, something's wrong with my my particular repo. That's why that didn't work out. Um, but uh, the, the next uh, takeaway here is uh, uh, tools and services. We looked at the logs. We looked at the um, terminal, right? I clicked on the link where you can like RSH into the pod itself and kind of poke around. Uh, there's some metrics. Um, I think I really talked about the metrics much. So if I come over here, up here, memory usage, CPU usage, file system. This is a, a cluster-wide metrics collection system. So these all get uh, aggregated, but you can also see them on a pod-by-pod -pod basis here. Um, let's see. And it's an uh, excellent platform for implementing CI/CD pipelines. The um, uh, this particular project that we're using, the GitLab one, is is relatively new, but the Jenkins stuff is really, really robust. Um, we, OpenShift has been using Jenkins and has come bundled with Jenkins templates uh, since, as well, since I started working with it three years ago. And they've only gotten better over time. So, uh, about Stone Door Group, if you are a Red Hat customer, you may have worked with a Stone Door person without even knowing it because, um, you know, one of our roles is staff augmentation. So I, when I come into a client, I, I am a Red Hat person. I have a Red Hat email, et cetera. Uh, but there, we have, um, you know, a ton of OpenShift consultants um, trying to do as much OpenShift as we can. Uh, it's one of my favorite platforms. The uh, OpenShift uh, Container Platform Accelerator is something we have. So if you want to start playing with OpenShift and don't have any other resources, uh, you can go ahead and, you know, go to that web page, the standard order web page, and uh, request a system. We'll spin you up something. Uh, and then you can uh, speak with us uh, with regard to your OpenShift needs. And here again is that, that link for the accelerator and just another reference to the docs at OpenShift.com. You should probably um, add some of these other links to it that we put in the chat. That is the conclusion. Um, do one last call for questions. If if, if you got one, uh, question or comment, fire it off. If not, I'll say uh, you know, good afternoon and have a wonderful week. All right. Any more questions? CJ, that was great. I know what uh, I'm going to be doing here shortly. I'm going to be uh, trying out this uh, GitLab runner for sure. Really cool stuff. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you for attending this Red Hat Open demo session. Uh, check out the chat for the December raffle link. You get a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift certificate as well as a Red Hat polo, I believe. Um, so with that, make sure you check our schedule, Red Hat Open uh, Demos dot com for the next uh, demo session coming your way. Thanks again, CJ and Stone Door Group, uh, and we'll see everyone on the next open demo. Thank you. Thanks, Mike.